Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Today we're visiting the New Jersey School of Woodwork, which is on the base floor of Get a Grip in Washington, New Jersey. This is at 37 East Washington Avenue. Hey Bob. Hey Hello. Scott, how you doing? Good. Come hey, I'm really, in. I'm really excited to be here. Meet the official greeter of the New Jersey School of Woodwork. That's Boomer. That's Boomer. All right, Boomer. He's my four-year-old English lad. He he greets everybody with a smile, as oh. you can see. All right. He's always willing to play. So, welcome to the New Jersey School of Woodwork. Let me show you around. Okay, thanks. First thing you're going to see is this colorful area over here. This is Scroll Saw Alley. We've got enough scroll saws for every student, so nobody has to wait in line to take a take a scroll saw class. And we can make some really fun objects here. Mm -hmm. In the holidays, I do an ornament class with these scroll saws. And you can do things like fret work, which are things like this. This saw is capable of cutting really small, tight turns. And you can make some really ornamental things. Mm -hmm. Or you could do marquetry, which is this is cutting veneer pictures and putting them back together into an image. And you can, you can do some really, really beautiful things with marquetry work. And these saws are quite capable of, of all of that. Mm -hmm. And that's due to the blades being so small. They're almost, almost the diameter of a, a human hair. It's, it's ridiculously small, and, and these will cut really well. And they're very safe. The kids love them. About two weeks ago, I had a Girl Scout troop here, and they were all on these saws and having a ball, having a great time. They made some really fun things. Over here, you have band saws. So there's four band saws here, each one with a different blade, each one with a different size motor. So this one is set up for resawing, which is taking larger blocks of wood, slicing them lengthwise, and making smaller pieces. So if I want to make four or five pieces out of this one piece, I can resaw it on this particular bandsaw. That's this saw's job. The other ones have smaller blades, and they'll, they'll do similar work. But this one is a, a quarter inch blade, which is capable of cutting nice sweeping curves. And it actually cut this radius as well. So it'll do some really nice work as well. So we have enough of those so students don't have to wait in line to use a bandsaw. And we use those in many of our classes. Over here is a sharpening station. There's a whole host of sharpening objects or elements in here. So we've got diamond stones, oil stones, water stones, uh, um, um, Tormex style wet, wet wheel, grinding stone, buffing stone, brass wheel, burnishing stone, and then this particular setup is for carving chisels. And for those of you who aren't familiar, carving chisels are things that have really weird shapes. So you need a, a really specific wheel to be able to carve that. Okay. Behind the carving station over here to the left, we have the sanding station. So all of the sanders are there. There's enough sanders for every student. There's finishing materials there, all kinds of sandpaper, and some pneumatic nail guns. To the right of that is the cordless station. So there's uh, uh, seven cordless drills and all the associated batteries and chargers. So nobody has to wait for a drill. There's one for everybody. Above it, you'll see the Society of American Period Furniture Makers banner. That's an organization that's specifically focused on period furniture and period furniture pieces. And their website's there at the bottom of the banner. I happen to be the sitting president of that organization, and we have a lot of fun with them and uh, actually host their meetings here as, as well. Um, here you see a couple of screens on wheels. Uh, these are set up with closed circuit cameras, so when we do bench work, I can hardwire those and have them setting out in the classroom area so nobody misses anything and they don't have to crowd around the bench. Here is an uh, old school, as you would say, drafting table. So we, we have a student who's coming in to do a project. They can actually do a, um, a draft dra a drawing on the drafting board. This happens to be a drawing I did with Phil Lowe of a uh, uh, 18th century English tea table. And this was a class that Phil taught me on drawing this. So speaking of Phil, I had an opportunity to go out to Indianapolis for a period of eight years. I went there every year and I studied with some of the best in the world out there. I got to study with Phil Lowe before he passed, obviously. Actually, I took the last class that Phil ever taught and I considered him a friend. Uh, I have his phone number in my phone. Uh, Silas Kopf and Steve Lada are both also 
uh, people that I had the opportunity to train with. Stephen Proctor worked for Wendell Castle, so a lot of the work that Wendell Castle actually produced was made with Stephen Proctor's hands. So I got to study with him as well. So I, I was really fortunate and blessed to be able to have those people in my path, and I got to study and, and still maintain contact with a lot of them. So that's where some of my training came from mm -hmm. in formal furniture making. Awesome. So on to hand tools. We have a couple of routers here, which are not technically hand tools. I guess they are since you hold them by hand. But there's about a dozen of routers in there and a, and a few associated bits, which is part of the, we have, we have a router class where we, we go through these and, and, and show how to, how to use and how not to use these. And then we can't neglect hand tools. This is an old Stanley four. This old girl I've had for 20 plus years. Uh, still cuts the, the as good as the day it was made. And it's you can see there's still wood chips in it. I was just using it the other day. This is probably over 100 years old now and still use it on a regular basis. So if you buy good tools, they last a good long while mm -hmm. and, and you can use them well. Also have a complement of uh, Lee Nielsen hand planes here and shoulder planes, specialty planes to, to let students use and, and give them the experience of, of using. We have the Japanese saw, which everybody has become, you know, familiar with. And then, of course, we have the, you know, traditional dovetail and, and carcass saws here. Uh, I have a set of a full set of Stanley bench chisels that I put in students' hands. These chisels are over 100 years old, still work great, still use them. And, and I put those in students' hands because, again, when we're teaching hand tool skills, we want students to be able to put the tools in their hands and use them, and I want them to have good, good uh, experience with that. I, here's the classroom. I became a Joburg distributor. That's S-J-O-B-E-R-G is how that's pronounced. And uh, I was able to afford to purchase eight of these benches, which gives students the opportunity and experience to work behind a real professional cabinet maker's bench. I've had this one for 20 plus years actually about 24 years now. They don't even make this one anymore. It's too heavy to ship. <laughs> so um, this, this old beast I've been working behind for a couple of decades and it's served me well. So we, we uh, do our coursework, our classwork here in the bench room. This, this is what would be considered the bench room. As you can see, whiteboard behind me. So we, we communicate through that. And uh, one of my favorite sayings, uh, perfection is not attainable, but if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. And that's what we're after. We want successful outcomes, and we want to have excellent, excellent work here. Back in the back of the bench room. Uh, you were talking about um, like woodworking 101 and 102. Yes, let me go, let me go into that. So 101 is really an introduction to the novice who, who's interested in woodworking and making things with their hands, but hasn't really ever done anything like that. Um, this 101 class that I is just about to close out, it's got three weeks left, before the next section starts um, is sold out and they're having a great time. They're making some fun stuff and they've never done anything like that. The youngest student is 22 and the oldest student is 63 and everything in between, uh, men and women alike, and we're having a great time. So we, we start with the basics of layout, measuring, marking, cutting to a line. We introduce box joints cut by hand. We introduce dovetails cut by hand and fitment and how important layout is. That's really the 101 class. And then we introduce a project, which is a shaker style footstool, mortise and tenon with angled mortise and tenon braces. Fun project, deceptively complicated. Uh, and then the 102 course, which is coming after that, we'll, we'll take that up a notch. So we'll make a traditional style uh, machinist chest with all dovetail drawers and a lid and you know all of the mechanisms will be sliding dovetails and so on and so forth. Minimal hardware in that, it'll all be joinery that holds that box together. So that's two of the longer courses. Those are 12 week long courses and they offer 52 to 54 hours of instruction. Mm -hmm. So those run two hours during one night a week and then every three weeks we have a full Saturday. So we do introduce skills in three consecutive nights and then the following Saturday we work on those skills and then next three weeks we introduce new skills I introduce new skills and then we work on those and we just come compound that and then we about halfway through the course I introduce a project by which you now apply all of those skills that you've just been introduced to in the past six weeks 
So it seems to be a rhythm that working really well. And this 101 class is already chomping at the bit to get to the 102 section. So excited to move them forward. And then of course, there's all of the other courses where we do, you know, it's um, kind of an intensive. We'll do a four day course where we'll build a three legged stool or a chessboard uh, table or, uh, um, you know, any number of smaller projects that can be accomplished in a small period of time. But you can see all of that on the school calendar at njsow.org. Just go there. I'm a 501c3, so I'm a nonprofit, so I'm a .org. And you can see all of that, all the coursework, everything, what it costs, the times and everything, and sign up right through, yeah. the, right through the website. So it's an easy thing to do. And you've got a lot of photographs on your Facebook page as oh, well. Oh, yeah, school has a Facebook page with hundreds and hundreds of pictures. We do a date night once a month, and that sells out months. It's already sold out for the month of April, and uh, May is already half sold out. So I only booked that about a month in advance. Uh, set that up, make it available for booking about a month in advance. And what's date night? Um, date night is uh, you come down. It's a couple for a couple. It doesn't have to be husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. It's just a couple. And uh, you come on out. Dinner's included. And we make a cutting board. And my wife describes it as, as a Williams and Sonoma style cutting board. And there's hundreds of pictures of those uh, on, the, on the Facebook page of very happy people making those. And there's a... Uh, a big bin back there I'll show you that well, I prepare uh, blanks, a whole pile of blanks, and you go through and pick out your color pattern that speaks to you, and, and we glue them up and plane them down, and you leave here with a finished board oiled, ready to use. Wow. And that, and that's a... All right, let's take a look at the clamp area. We got a couple of clamps here in the school. So, a couple of clamps here because you can, you know, what's the rule of woodworking rule? You can never have too many clamps, or is it the one who dies with the most clamps wins? I forget which <laughs> it is, but, but I'm, 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 I think I'm in the competition. I'm doing well. So we can move around the corner. Back here, if you kind of just cast your camera back that way, Bob, you'll see we've got a little lunchroom set up back here. So there's a microwave, a toaster, a water cooler, a little refrigerator, and it's surrounded by two little bookcases that are three decades worth of re reading material that I've collected over the years. And these are available for students to check out. Um, there's a little clipboard, you can sign out a book and it's all done on our system. Uh, if you keep one of my books, I will track you down. But uh, <laughs> we have music piped out all throughout the day, which we have turned off for the, for the filming. Here's some of the hardwood inventory that's available for students to use. This represents about 30% of what I actually own. Um, so this is available for students. There's all kinds of wood throughout here. And we use this for projects and or date night uh, cutting boards and things like that. Here's that cutting board bin I was telling you about. I fill this thing completely up and it's all kinds of wood in there from Sapelli mahogany and walnut and maple. And this is actually a piece of Sweetina mahogany. You will get that cut up. and curly maple and make some really colorful boards. Here we have the sanding stations. So we've got an oscillating spindle, which I like to say round and round and up and down. <laughs> Here we have an oscillating belt, again, round and round and up and down. It does a great job. Here we have a big disc sander. Um, this is set here just so somebody doesn't turn that on accidentally. An inflatable drum sander for doing curved work. Three drill presses. Each one is set up to do a little different thing. This is set up for uh, cabinet doors, so you have a couple of stops. You can determine where your cup hinges are to be drilled. This one is just for general purpose drilling. And that one, that one over there is rigged with an angled table so you can drill angle holes. They're really simple. We just put a block in here and determine what angle we want to drill. Say you're making that three-leg stool, yep. and we want to drill angled holes into the bottom of the seat. This is a simple way to do that, and it's a really simple fixture to to put together. To your left here, we have three table saws, two Powermatic 66s, and one uh, Delta down there. This Powermatic 66 is actually up for sale right now because I've just purchased a new saw stop saw. I'll be bringing that into school because I want students to be able to use the table saw and have a confidence level that they uh, are working safe and working smart. And uh, I'm kind of excited about that. It's probably the biggest purchase I've made for the school since I, most of this equipment was mine from my old cabinet shop. And when I shut that down, I moved all that equipment here. I love these big outfeed tables. Yes, that's great for, for um, 
you know, when you're when you're ripping down bigger materials, you can uh, you can have good support there. Oh, uh, this, this is your this is your data your, yep. your dado table saw. Yeah, okay. this one's dedicated for a dado stack, and I leave the dado stack on this saw. Um, and I have the sacrificial fence here, so we can we can use that with the dado stack mm -hmm. and adjust ourselves accordingly. Um, back over here, we have uh, two powermatic helical head joiners. So those of you who are familiar with the helical head, it's got the uh, spiral uh, knives and the the uh, ind indexed heads. So it's uh, it's a wonderful cutting machine. It does a great job. This is the way to go. They're quieter. Yes. They make smaller chips. It's easier for dust no collection. No tear out. No tear out. Yep. At all. Yeah. Great for highly figured woods. Yep. And then the thickness planer, which is a Powermatic 20, um, that also has a helical head. And it's sitting on top of that is the little DeWalt lunchbox planer. We use that for smaller, smaller things, doing real thin material. If we want to plane, you know, something less than a quarter of an inch, we'll, run, we'll use the little DeWalt. The helical head will just eat it up. Up here is the success sign. This lights up. I like this up on date nights and, and class nights because we want successful outcomes here. And that's what we're all about here at the New Jersey School of Woodwork. I noticed you got a molding machine over here. Yeah, this is a Williams and Hussey molding machine. Um, we use this for, you know, um, occasional projects. If somebody wants to build a bookcase and have a molding profile on it. Um, to your left there are some, uh, that's the Pelly Mahogany door jams uh, that uh, I made that are being used actually at my house. <laughs> Okay, so being a lathe guy myself, I noticed you got a couple nice lathes out here. You got the old Laguna and the one the way. one way. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, this this one I love this lathe. This was kind of made for me. I'm a vertically challenged fellow. I'm not very tall, <laughs> so as you can see, the Laguna is is about four inches higher. So this one is uh, it's a nice saw, a, a nice lathe. Don't get me wrong, but I this is my preference. Uh, mm -hmm. The one way. I always I always wanted one and finally got one i don't really t technically officially teach turning classes but i make these lathes available for open shop for somebody who wants mm -hmm. to use them or needs to use them or, or personally if i i need to make something i can do that as well so um i'd love to be able to grow into a turning studio but that's i need more space to be able to do that but there's time here's a, a wide belt a time saver it's a 37 inch um here's a table top that a student is working on they've just glued up they're working on their bread boy joinery now. So um, they've been chopping this out and getting this ready and cleaning it up. And they'll maybe be making a breadboard in for this after we uh, run it through the time saver to flatten it all down and get it nice and good. But it's, uh, you know, it's inch and, inch and a half thick uh, white maple. So it's, it's, uh, it's gonna be a beautiful table. Probably gonna use walnut breadboard ends, uh, which should be pretty spectacular. So I see you've got quite an inventory of veneers. Tell me about it. Yeah, I've got about a quarter million square feet of veneer here of all different species from all over the world. Um, I was very fortunate in acquiring this. A friend of mine owned a business that he closed. He was actually bought out, and I was able to acquire this via him. And uh, he was quite happy to endorse what or support what the school is doing here. So this provides me an opportunity to work with veneer. Our chessboard classes, we get to make some really, really beautiful boards out of wood that's, you know, exotics. And, you know, veneer got a bad rap back in the 50s when they were making furniture out of veneer and the adhesives were just bad adhesives. So the veneer was peeling and cracking and flaking and veneer got a rap as being cheap stuff. And quite honestly, if you really do your history, as the Society of American Period Furniture does, you'll find that some of the finest furniture in the world is veneered furniture. In fact, there are some pieces of furniture you can't make unless you use veneer, like this round table over here. Let me show you. Yeah, let's take a look. So this table over here is walnut crotch. And this is a 18 piece. Oh my goodness. Book matched walnut crotch with a Carpathian elm center. And this is holly and Macassar ebony. Now, just think about trying to make this table out of solid wood, it would blow itself apart. Expansion and contraction wouldn't allow, because wood, as you know, expands more tangentially mm -hmm. than longitudinally. 
So these wedges would literally drive themselves apart. So you couldn't really build a table like this that would stay together in solid wood, which is kind of a misnomer because veneer is solid wood. Mm -hmm. It's just really thin, <laughs> solid wood. So it's not that it's not wood. It is wood. You sure. sand it and finish it just like wood. Yep. So this is a 60-inch diameter table. And when you, when you match this all up, then you press it in a vacuum press. And I have several of these bags. I have actually, I'm up to 12 of these now in different sizes, depending on what I'm pressing. And there's a vacuum pump down here on the floor uh, by va vacuum pressing systems. And uh, you put this in the, in the press with the right adhesives and you can press up a table like this overnight and, and do a fantastic job, fantastic job. So this is a lot of fun to do. People mm. love watching the vacuum mm. suck down and get all tight and mm. uh, it's fun to do. And this is one of your classes as well, this right? Is a, yeah, we do this in the veneering class, working with veneer. We, we, and our chessboard table class is veneer. So I let the students pick out the veneer they want to use for their chessboard table. So some of them put some real exotic combinations together. It's a lot of fun. And, it, and it, again, it's not, it's not a whole lot of money to do that. Um, and you can produce a really beautiful board. Yeah, actually. We were talking about hand tools earlier, and I forgot to mention the Festool complement of hand tools. We've got a pretty good selection here. We've got a couple of the track saws, which are a wonderful invention. Um, so we, I demonstrate those with students, and we can use those. And that's the uh, the HK the 75, which is the big track saw. That one down there is the little one that has a track affixed to it. I've got two of the larger saws, and then two of the dominoes, which any of you who have been introduced to these, you know what kind of magic these things can mm -hmm. do. And they're wonderful. And I have two of these complete setups for students to use. Um, two uh, cordless drills and two routers, um, uh, all part of that uh, um, assembly of festival equipment here. A couple of jigsaws, both the D handle and the barrel handle, so you can use you know whichever fits your hand best. This one I like uh, for me. That one's a little fat for me, but um, you know so I have it. I'm trying to accommodate students of all sizes, shape, and dimensions so we can uh, make sure we have successful outcomes. That's what we're about. So the dominoes are here, and the domino, uh, the actual dominoes are here. And I didn't know this. Did you know this, Bob? They make dominoes for exterior furniture. I had not heard that. I did not know that. And I just new. recently discovered this, and these are for um, use, use in making outdoor furniture. So if you want to make patio furniture sure. or, or things like that, add around back chairs that you're gonna have outside, mm -hmm. they make dominoes for outside use. So you can, you know, make yourself a couple of nice uh, cedar Adirondack chairs or whatnot. So um, that's pretty much the tour. Back there from a distance, you can see some lockers. So if you have a need to store some things here, I've got a set of lockers back there. You can put a padlock on that. Uh, you can see one student's taken. There's a piece of green tape. Uh, her name is on there. She's kind of taken over that locker. And um, we do our best to uh, accommodate as many as we can. I didn't notice before, you got a garage door here. Yes, in That's, summertime. That is phenomenal, yeah. We open that up and uh, we uh, let outside inside and it's great in the summer because you can get some nice fresh air in here and, um, and, and really feel like you're working outside. Have smocks over here if anybody's working with finishes so they don't have to be concerned about their, uh, their clothing. Mm -hmm. And every bench has a, an electrical drop above it so you don't have to run the extension cords all over mm -hmm. the place. And we try to accommodate that. Every bench is also set up with a, um, a, a mallet and a clamp, a hold down, and bench dogs. Right. What do they do for their PPE? Um, there's on the shelf over there is a, a bottle of hand sanitizer for every bench. And then there's masks. Um, I have a, a two gross of masks. So if you want a mask, I have these in quantity. Mm -hmm. Every student that enrolls for a class gets a official New Jersey School of Woodwork notebook that is part of their class. They nice. get this nice to keep notes and keep copious notes on their coursework. We have hand tools out for everybody to use. 
and um, internet access, free Wi-Fi here, and you can print right to this printer. It's on the Wi-Fi network. We have air conditioners. Mm -hmm. So in the summertime, if it gets really hot and humid, we kick on the air conditioners and, and condition this space. So it's very comfortable here. Um, and as you can see around the space, there's these old fashioned carpenter's aprons. I collect those. I have them all over the place. Nice collection. Um, yeah. I have one actually from the very first lumber yard I ever had a, 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 an account uh, with. And um, I like to collect those. And these are the deluxe ones with the bib on them. So those are kind of fun. There's some. So Scott, I noticed these time cards. What's that about? Oh, that's a good question, Bob. That's actually for the open shop program. So one of the services we offer here at the New Jersey School of Woodwork is you can sign up for open shop time. And open shop time is just that. You come down, you sign up for a certain period of time, and you have access to all the tools and toys that you've just seen in the video, mm -hmm. and me, and of course, Boomer. And you know, if you have a project that you may not have the equipment for, or you need a little help with, you can come on down and book open shop time and basically rent a bench. Nice. And you have a space to work, you have me looking over your shoulder to make sure you leave here with all fingers. <laughs> That's a standing rule in the New Jersey School of Woodwork. You must leave with the same number you walked in with. Okay. Standing rule, non-negotiable. Right, good. And uh, you can work on a project that you have going on. So here you see, like, um, this, this, this person has signed up for five days, and they've used four of their five days. It doesn't have to be consecutive days, but... Uh, that's how that works. And it's really the honor system. You come in, you uh, sign in your day, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, it's blocked out that way. So you can, you can sign up for one day or five days, or I've had one student who signed up for a month at a time because he was building his own dining room table and had no idea what he was doing. So like everything else in the world, the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. So a day is $128 and a week is $525. I think it's a terrific service. A lot of people don't have the, the time or the money to, or the space to have woodworking equipment. And you throw in a, a great teacher like that. It's the terrific, the terrific service. Thank you. Okay, Scott, so how do people get hold of you? Okay, well, you can look at classes and, and schedule of classes at the website, njsow.org. You can see all the information that you want to see about classes, cost of classes, how to book classes. You can do it all right on the website. Or if you want to just give me a call and talk about it or come down and have a visit, you can call me at 908-303-6648. Again, that's 908-303-6648. And you come on down and see us anytime. That's awesome. Thank you so much. This was a uh, terrific shop tour and I think a wonderful school. So I'm looking forward to coming back and uh, over and out for now. Okay, Bob, thanks so much for doing this. All right, bye-bye. Bye now, bye now. Wow, what a fantastic way to spend the afternoon. So if you want to get a hold of Scott, you can contact him directly on his cell at 908-303-6648, or you can get him on his email address. So hey, you guys know the drill. Thanks for watching, and please like, comment, and subscribe.